members of the DFA press corps and media accompanying the U.S. delegation, and welcome to the fourth Philippine-U.S. 2 plus 2 Ministerial Dialogue Joint Press Conference. We will first hear from Secretary for Foreign Affairs Enrique Manalo, and then Secretary of Defense Gilberto Tudor Jr., after which we will request Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and then Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin III to deliver their remarks, after which we will have the Q&A. Secretary, Ma Secretary Manalo, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I wish to begin by thanking Secretary uh, Theodoro for hosting the fourth Philippine-U.S. 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue here in Camp Aguinaldo. And we're very pleased to welcome Secretary Blinken and Secretary Austin back to Manila. The alliance of our two countries is historic, shaped by our adherence to democracy, social justice, and the rule of law. For over seven decades, we have demonstrated its dynamism as we jointly respond to common challenges. Our cooperation has contributed in the preservation, to the preservation of peace and security and brought about opportunities for our mutual growth and prosperity. The Philippines values the United States' ironclad commitment to the alliance and remains steadfast to the positive trajectory of our bilateral relations over a range of initiatives. From the launch of the Luzon Economic Corridor and the conduct of Balikatan exercises both in April 2024 our alliance is robust, multifaceted, and serves the greater regional interests. There are just two of, these are just two of the significant headways we have accomplished in the last 24 months that deliver on our alliance commitments in the broadest sense. And there's more work to be done, and we will continue to forge ahead. Our meeting today provided us an opportunity to assess progress on our bilateral cooperation since the last 2 plus 2 dialogue in Washington, D.C. We had very productive discussions in areas such as trade and economic cooperation, infrastructure and security cooperation. The alliance is broad-based and supports efforts towards the achievement of Philippine development goals. We will be issuing shortly a joint statement that outlines the details of our discussions and commitments. Let me speak briefly on the issues concerning economic development and resilience. We reviewed what has happened over the past year, and we were gratified at the depth and breadth of the economic engagement of our two countries. From the first ever preferential trade and investment mission led by Commerce Secretary Gine Ramundo, to the co-hosting of the Indo-Pacific Business Forum here in Manila, to, and to the series of dialogues dealing with aviation, science and technology, energy, space, and cybersecurity, we have done much and accomplished much equally in charting a path towards our objectives of stable, sustainable, and secure economic growth. We are committed to following through on the ongoing cooperation with the Millennium Challenge Corporation and the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework and the Partnerships for Global Infrastructure and Investment. In this regard, we look towards identifying and implementing projects for investment in the Luzon Economic Corridor. Finally, on people-to-people -people ties, we laud the work of the Philippine Fulbright Commission and the USAID in the harnessing of educational cooperation and development assistance. We are also excited about the ongoing work with the Millennium Challenge Corporation on a threshold program. Let me end by emphasizing that the Philippines will continue to uphold and protect the rules-based international order in the midst of a regional landscape that is significantly under stress. In our discussions, I have conveyed the situation in the West Philippine Sea and the South China Sea and that it remains a priority to our government. In line with our treaty obligations, we discussed recent developments and committed to continue our work together in upholding Philippine sovereignty, sovereign rights, and jurisdiction. I would like to thank again my partner, Secretary Theodoro of the DND, and our Carton Parts and Friends, Secretaries Blinken and Austin, for the candid, constructive, and comprehensive discussions we had today on this historic, first ever Philippine-US 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue in Manila. 
I truly believe our discussions and more importantly, our firm commitment to Philippine-U.S. relations undeniably demonstrates that our alliance is ironclad. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Manalo. Secretary Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It has indeed been an honor to welcome Secretaries Blinken and Austin, Secretary Manalo, to Camp Aguinaldo for today's 2 plus 2. Today, as we convene the fourth 2 plus 2 meeting between us, we continue the important conversation that began between our defense establishments in 2002, not only in words, but backed up by concrete accomplishments. We thank the U.S. government for the continued assistance in building up our capabilities, which will provide a tremendous boost in order for us to establish a credible deterrent to unlawful foreign aggression. We discussed security assistance roadmap that will bolster our sustainability, interoperability, redundancy, and effectiveness. We discussed ways and means of enhancing our cooperation and to ensure that the Philippines becomes an effective upholder of international law under a free and open global rules-based order. We will ensure more frequent and regular policy and operational coordination. We will also bolster maritime cooperative activities and expand coordination with Japan and Australia and other like-minded nations, not only in these areas, but in joint exercises and training as well, where applicable. We, agree, we agreed to fully implement EDCA projects and to increase investments in EDCA agreed locations. In this period of climate change uncertainty, this will certainly help our HADR efforts once these projects are completed. We will cooperate in cybersecurity by advancing the capabilities of both the DND and the AFP, not only in terms of capabilities, but also in terms of cooperation in threat detection and protection and in joint advanced technological development. We are optimistic that with robust cooperation in four dimensions, land, sea, air, and cyber, extensive interoperability both bilaterally and with like-minded nations, the U.S.-Philippine alliance will be a significant contributor to regional peace and stability under the regime of international law. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Tudoro. Secretary Blinken, you have the floor. Thank you very much. And it's very, very good to be back in Manila. This is my third visit here uh, as Secretary, my 18th trip to the Indo-Pacific over the last three and a half years. But let me begin by first expressing condolences to all of those killed, harmed, displaced by the recent typhoon and flooding. Um, I'm able to announce today an additional $1 million in assistance to help bring food, emergency shelter, logistics, and other aid to all of those who've been affected. I'm grateful to our colleagues, our friends, Secretaries Manolo and Teodoro, not only for hosting us, but for the very good very productive sessions that we had throughout the course of today. It's very good to be here with my friend and partner, Secretary Austin. We were just together in Japan for 2 plus 2. This is a reflection of President Biden's transformative leadership in the Indo-Pacific. Last year in Washington, President Biden and President Marcos set out an ambitious course for our partnership. And then in April, uh, President Marcos was back in Washington with Prime Minister Kashida of Japan and President Biden to launch a historic trilateral partnership between our countries. As a result of these visits, but also the work that we're doing every single day, our relationship between the United States and the Philippines is the strongest that it's ever been. And today's talks built on that unprecedented momentum in a number of very concrete ways. Our armed forces uh, are working on more shared priorities in more places than ever before. We're now allocating an additional $500 million in foreign military financing to the Philippines to boost security collaboration with our oldest treaty ally in this region. Uh, new steps to strengthen the alliance, once in a generation investment to help modernize the Filipino Armed Forces and Coast Guard, our first bilateral security sector assistance roadmap, 
doubling our investments in the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement. Both of us share concerns, uh, and many other countries in the region share concerns as well, about some of the actions that the People's Republic of China has taken, escalatory actions in the South China Sea, the East China Sea, and elsewhere. And this is something that we heard uh, much about from our colleagues at the recent ASEAN meetings. Defiance of the 2016 Arbitral Tribunal decision, uh, coercive methods being used in, uh, in the seas. We welcome the provisional agreement uh, understanding reached between the PRC and the Philippines on the rotation and resupply of the Second Thomas Shoal. And we were pleased to see that the first resupply mission subsequent to that understanding went forward without incident. It's very important that that be the standard, not the exception. And as I said to the Chinese Foreign Minister when we met in Laos a few days ago, China must uphold its commitments to not obstruct uh, the Philippines in their resupply missions. We stand by our ironclad defense commitment to the Philippines under the Mutual Defense Treaty. That extends to armed attacks on Filipino armed forces, public vessels or aircraft, including the Coast Guard, anywhere in the Pacific, including the South China Sea. As you heard from Secretary Manalo, we're equally focused on our economic partnership, our economic relationship. This is really comprehensive security, not just our military and physical security, but also our economic security and our joint resilience. We have partnering uh, and partnership on critical uh, industries. Uh, the Philippines is a priority partner on semiconductor manufacturing. 20% of global assembly, testing, and packaging takes place here in the Philippines. Thanks to the CHIPS Act, uh, we're finalizing collaboration to support the strengthening of Filipino capacity. We're focused on workforce development as well as on regulatory reform. We're also investing in high quality, high impact infrastructure via the Luzon Economic Corridor. Connecting key economic hubs, Subic Bay, Clark, Manila, Batangas, and doing this through investments in rail, in port modernization, in clean energy, in semiconductor supply chains, in agribusiness. As we lower logistics costs, as we strengthen supply chains for critical industries, that will continue to drive investment and growth and will be a benefit to all of us. And this is supported by coordinated action, including coordinated action between the United States and Japan. Uh, all of this part of the historic trilateral cooperation that uh, our presidents inaugurated just a few months ago. Finally, we're advancing energy security and the clean energy transition. This month, our bilateral uh, civil nuclear cooperation agreement entered into force. And we talked today about next steps, including helping to develop a safe, secure, and modern civil nuclear sector. We are living in an incredibly complex moment. And as a result, the partnership between our countries is more important than ever. And our commitment to growing it now and for the years ahead is resolute. Thank you. Thank you, Sec Secretary Blinken. Secretary Austin, please. Thank you. Secretary Teodoro, Secretary Manalo, uh, it's great to be back in Manila for another two plus two ministerial dialogue. Many thanks to you both for your tremendous hospitality. Before be I begin, like Secretary Blinken, I am thinking about everyone who was affected by the typhoon and flooding here several days ago. Please know that the United States will always stand with you. As President Biden says, our countries share a strong partnership and also a strong friendship enriched by millions of Filipino Americans living all across the United States. So we're here to build on that extraordinary foundation. We're working to advance our shared vision of a free and open Indo-Pacific. And together, we're taking bold steps to strengthen our alliance. Today, as you heard, Secretary Blinken and I announced that we are poised to deliver a once-in-a-generation investment to help modernize the armed forces of the Philippines and the Philippine Coast Guard. We're working with the U.S. Congress to allocate $500 million in foreign military financing to the Philippines. Now, this level of funding is unprecedented. 
and it sends a clear message of support for the Philippines from the Biden-Harris administration, the U.S. Congress, and the American people. Today, we also concluded the first ever bilateral security sector assistance roadmap. Now, that roadmap will ensure that our mutual investments go toward the most important capabilities. We also reaffirmed the Department of Defense that the Department of Defense intends to more than double our investments at enhanced defense cooperation agreement locations across the Philippines. President Biden's budget request this year includes more than $128 million to fund important EDCA infrastructure projects. And U.S. government investment in these locations extends beyond the Department of Defense. For example, USA, USAID plans to pre-position disaster relief supplies in an EDCA location later this year. That will allow the Department to work alongside our Philippine allies to rapidly provide humanitarian assistance in times of need. Now, during our meeting, we also reaffirmed that the Mutual Defense Treaty remains the bedrock of our alliance. And let me be clear. The Mutual Defense Treaty applies to armed attacks on either of our armed forces, aircraft, or public vessels anywhere in the South China Sea. Together, we also discussed how to make our alliance even more secure through technology and security and cyber cooperation. We re reiterated our shared intent to conclude a general security of military information agreement by the end of the year. Now, that's crucial to our shared cybersecurity goals. And finally, we underscored the importance of working even more closely with like-minded allies and partners, including Australia and Japan. This is part of what I've described as the new convergence in the Indo-Pacific. And we can see that new convergence right here. The United States, the Philippines, and our other allies and partners are operating together more closely and capably than ever. And we're working together to ensure a free and open region. So it's been a great day for our alliance here in Manila. And Jibo, and Ricky, Tony, thanks for your vision and your leadership. And I am confident that our two proud democracies will continue to deepen our alliance. So with that, we look forward to your questions. Thank you, Secretary Austin. Thank you, Secretaries. We will now proceed to the question and answer portion. We will entertain four questions, one each directed to each secretary. May I call Liz Frieden of Fox News for her question directed to Secretary Austin. Liz? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Secretary Austin, having just spoken with Israeli Defense Minister Gallant yesterday, do you believe an Israeli operation in Lebanon is imminent? And can Israel fight both Hamas and Lebanese Hezbollah at the same time and when? Uh, for Secretary Blinken, uh, the U.S. is investing an unprecedented amount of money and resources to the Philippines. Why now, and why is the Philippines relevant to a potential invasion of Taiwan? Uh, for Secretary Manolo, following your meeting with China's Foreign Minister Wang, uh, he warned that U.S. intermediate range missile deployment could start an arms race with China. Do you think that you're starting an arms race? Liz, that's uh, three questions. I suppose one, more. one question um, for Secretary, uh, uh, Secretary Austin. That I will deprive the others of their question. So please, uh, we will leave it to that, and we will see which questions will be answered. Yeah. Yes, Secretary Austin, please. Liz, thanks for your question. I believe that uh, you asked whether or not um, a fight was uh, with, uh, between Israel and Lebanon. Israel and Lebanon Hezbollah is inevitable, um, or imminent, excuse me. Uh, I don't believe that, uh, while we've seen a lot of uh, activity on, on uh, Israel's northern border, we remain concerned about uh, the potential of this escalating into a full-blown fight. Uh, and uh, I don't believe that a fight is, is inevitable. I think that, uh, you know, we'd like to see uh, things resolved in a diplomatic fashion. Uh, as to whether or not uh, Israel can manage 
uh, a war in Gaza and a, and a fight in, in Lebanon at the same time. Uh, Israel will do what it needs to defend itself, and it's demonstrated that uh, you know, time and again. We've committed to, to uh, helping Israel uh, defend itself for whatever it takes, uh, and certainly uh, that's not a scenario that we'd like to see occur. We'd like to see uh, things resolved in a diplomatic fashion going forward. And, uh, Liz, with regard to the uh, foreign military financing, uh, as you know, the Philippines has actually long been one of the largest recipients of foreign military financing in the Indo-Pacific, but the uh, very significant additional investment that we're making in FMF, the $500 million, this is really designed to support the modernization of Filipino forces, uh, Coast Guard, as they transition to focus on external defense. Um, we're building on a lot of progress the Philippines has already made to be better positioned to defend their sovereignty. That is what this is about. Uh, and more generally, with uh, regard to Taiwan, both of us, and for that matter, uh, virtually every country in the region and countries around the world, are determined that uh, we see the status quo maintained, that we preserve peace and stability. That's where our focus is. I think there's a, a recognition uh, around the world that were there to be some kind of crisis on Taiwan, it would affect everyone. It would have global impact. We have 50 percent of container traffic uh, going through the Taiwan Straits every single day, 70 percent of the semiconductors manufactured on Taiwan. So there's a recognition around the world that were there to be a crisis there, everyone would be affected, which is exactly why all of us are focused on trying to make sure that peace and stability uh, is preserved, that the status quo uh, is maintained. And finally, I just say, the alliance that we have with the Philippines, this long-standing alliance, there's a critical word that applies to it. It's a defensive alliance. We are about making sure that all of us can protect and uphold uh, our sovereignty, our territorial integrity, freedom of navigation, freedom of commerce, which is so vital to everyone in this region. Thank you. Um, I wasn't able to hear the last part of your question, but I get, I get the gist. Uh, Regarding the uh, disposed uh, reference of uh, Foreign Minister Wang Yi to the missiles, all I can really say is that first, these missiles are meant for our own defensive capabilities, our own ability to improve our, our, uh, our defensive uh, deterrence. And they're not meant for any offensive purposes. So I really can't see on that basis how it would lead to an arms race. Okay. Thank you, Secretaries. The next. Uh, question should be raised by Simon Lewis of Reuters. Simon, you have the floor. Uh, thank you. Um, if you don't mind, I, I, would, I would like to put some questions to, to some of the different officials rather than uh, just Secretary Blinken. Um, Secretary Austin, uh, just to follow up a little bit on the, the question about Lebanon, um, the U.S. defended Israel when Iran fired missiles at it in, in April. Um, are you prepared to similarly, similarly defend Israel if a full-scale war breaks out uh, with, with Hezbollah in the north. Um, to Secretary uh, Teodoro, excuse me, um, your country and China appear to have different interpretations of the uh, second Thomas Scholl resupply agreement. Uh, you say that no prior notification or inspections are required uh, for the resupply. Can you share details of what the agreement says uh, and do you intend to press ahead with resupply missions on that basis, even if China doesn't agree with your interpretation? Uh, thanks, Simon. You, you mentioned uh, the actions that uh, we took along with other allies in the region to help defend Israel in, in April. Uh, and I have to take this opportunity to applaud the tremendous work that we saw uh, from our troops and uh, also uh, our allies uh, that came together in a very short period of time and did absolutely magnificent work, in my, in my opinion. Um, your, so your question is, if Israel is attacked, uh, will we help to defend Israel? Uh, if Israel is attacked, yes, we will, we will help to help Israel defend itself. Uh, we've been clear about that uh, from the very beginning. But again, we don't want to see that happen. What we want to see happen is things resolved in a diplomatic fashion. Secretary Tudora? On the gist of uh, the uh, uh, talks made with China, I will defer to the uh, Secretary of Foreign Affairs. However, suffice it to state that we will conduct 
regular and routine resupply missions uh, in accordance with our duties under the Philippine Constitution and uh, our responsibilities to our country. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Secretary Theodoro. Uh, yes, we will, of course, continue our supply resupply missions. On the issue of notification, I think uh, the more accurate term is exchange of information, which is exactly what we did with China, and uh, both of us. And uh, the fact that the uh, supply was a relative success, I think, indicates that uh, uh, it's something that uh, we are committed to pursue uh, in succeeding uh, supply uh, missions, provided, of course, China also adheres to the understanding. Thank you, Secretaries. Can we now call on Nestor Corrales of the Philippine Daily Inquirer for his question? Uh, this question is for Secretary Tudoro. Uh, Secretary, how will the 500 million in military funding, including the 128 million for EDCA investments from the U.S., help address Beijing's aggression in the South China Sea? And what will be the priorities under this funding? Well, the priorities will be stressed out, will be laid down in the security as sector assistance roadmap. Naturally, a lot of our inherent uh, Hardening capabilities are included, like cyber capabilities and the like. These and all the EDCA investments will uh, serve to secure the Philippines' credible deterrent posture. Every peso or dollar spent on hardening Philippine capabilities to defend itself and to deter unlawful aggression will be a plus against any threat actor whether it be China or anyone. So the EDCA uh, investments are not only solely for defense purposes, but are also for civil defense purposes like humanitarian assistance and disaster response. They can be venues for joint cooperation and interoperability between the United States and the Philippines and multilaterally with like-minded nations and likewise, they will serve also as venues for economic development, like Secretary Austin has said, with the USAID. So these are not monodimensional, but multidimensional investments that will uh, help the development of the country and help to deter unwanted and unlawful aggression by building a credible deterrent posture. Thank you, Secretary Tudoro. Uh, last question, Joyce Rocamora from PNA. Good afternoon. Uh, the rest of the ministers may also wish to answer. Uh, what assurance has the U.S. given to the Philippines and uh, the rest of Asia, including Japan and South Korea, that its strong security support would continue in case of a leadership change in um, the U.S. after the November elections? And in relation, the GSOMIA was also mentioned. Can you expound more on that? Um, it's addressed to, you're addressing it to all. Yes. To all. To all. Well, I can just, uh, I'm happy to start simply by saying that, of course, elections are a regular feature of our democracy. Uh, what's also a regular feature is a strong, long standing alliance between our countries. And that doesn't change from election to election. We have a mutual defense treaty that the United States is committed to. That commitment will endure, again, irrespective. Uh, of administrations. And this has been uh, a long and powerful story in our history. It will continue. Yeah. I'll, just, uh, okay. I'll just tag on to that and say that, you know, we, we see and have seen and will continue to see uh, bipartisan support uh, for uh, the Philippines uh, in our country. And any time that you see that level of bipartisan support, uh, in our government, you can bet that uh, support will continue uh, in, uh, in, in, in good fashion. Um, you know, I've said uh, a number of times that we're more than allies, we're family. And uh, uh, I would also say that I cannot imagine a day when the United States of America and the Philippines are not the best of friends the best of, and the best of allies. So. I think, uh, again, we, we continue to enjoy bipartisan support, and that's going to uh, uh, happen uh, going forward in the future. Well, I think 
I think I can only add to that and just say that uh, the Philippine-U.S. alliance and friendship has withstood the test of time. We've officially been uh, partners for seven decades, but it even goes beyond that. And in all those years, our relationship is held firmly and, in fact, has only grown more productive. And, uh, in fact, now we could even say our relationship is at a high point. But let me say that the fundamental factors accounting for all of that is not only our shared adherence to democratic values, the social justice, but also the strong people-to-people -people relationship, which has really been the bedrock of our relationship. And uh, I can say that aside from having shared interests, strategic, uh, a shared strategic outlook, I think all those factors will combine to ensure that our relationship continues beyond perhaps seven decades and even more. So I think uh, that is the best way to describe the state of our relationship. Uh, I believe our relationship uh, is based on two fundamental things. First is sustainability. Our engagements have always been on the principle of sustainability and not one-off, one-time things. Secondly, we share principles, uh, fundamental principles of adherence to international law and a rules-based international order. And both countries, and not only the United States, but like-minded partners realize that building up the Philippine credible deterrent posture is vital to ensuring the rule of international law in the Indo-Pacific, particularly in our region. No partisan political position can denigrate from these fundamental principles because these are goods, good things, right things that should be encouraged and developed. So I do not see any partisan political uh, detraction from our positions because they are based on principle. Secondly, in terms of the Gisomia question earlier, it is an attempt and an exercise, a continuing exercise to develop our operational security, which is a required stepping stone for our development in, of an armed force and a defense establishment with increasing sophistication to deal with vulnerabilities and with unpredictabilities in the future defense situation and picture. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, secretaries, for this joint press conference. Thank you, uh, DFA Press Corps and the members of the media joining the U.S. delegation. Can we request the secretaries for one photo opportunity uh, in front for one photo opportunity for the press, and then we will conclude this press conference. That concludes our press conference. A pleasant afternoon to everyone.